the Canola Council of Canada presents Harvest Management and Mitigating Loss, a Grower Q&A. So when looking at adjusting our combine for harvest losses, um, you know, financially it's something that's really important for us to take the time. But once you start to get um, losses of 5 or even 10% on a 50 bushel canola crop, that's 5 bushels you could be losing. You know, at 10 or $12, that's 50 or $60 an acre you could be losing. When you're looking at a, you know, $500 an acre, that's quite a large percentage for just a few minutes or maybe a half an hour or an hour of time, you know, starting and stopping the combine. Measuring the actual loss of the combine, not just ensuring that, that everything is uh, sealed properly and there are any leaks, but ensuring that uh, the amount of that we're throwing out over the combine is is a half a bushel or a bushel or less. Because what we're three percent used to be an acceptable loss. Today, with the volumes you're pushing through, it really isn't. Because those numbers can really add up. I usually just watch the monitors and check on the ground from time to time. Seems good enough, but I don't really know exactly what I'm losing. It's more of a gut feel. It's very hard to figure your loss with canola. I mean, you can't count berries. The only way you can get a really good measurement is get your chopper out of the way and the spreaders out of the way so that it's dropping it straight down. Once you put this chopper and the spreader on, it's really a guesswork as to how much you're catching out there. You can, but it's, it's less and less accurate. So this is sort of the, the best you can get is if you can get them out of the way. Just run along beside when the operator is comfortable at his operating speed. At it, where he thinks the losses are acceptable and uh, yeah, throw it down. And you go in with it upside down so that you're not catching as you stick it in. The idea then is to stop basically dead movement on the pan and flip it over so that the combine passes over. And that's what would land on the ground. Physically separating the seed from the straw and chaff can be the most time consuming part of the measurement process. So find a way that works best for you using one of these methods. I don't have a, a fancy catch pan to measure my losses. What do most producers use? Producers can likely find something that will work around the farm or at their local hardware store. It should not take significant investment. Ideally, what you use should have slightly raised sides to limit lost seed over the edges. I have a five foot square catch pan that I use on a stick put it with a magnet, stick to the bottom of your combine. Once you load up your combine, uh, you just uh, pull the plug and it'll drop down and that's where you'll see where your losses are. And then we'll screen everything out and just uh, see exactly how much we are throwing out. Almost any type of sampling is better than not checking at all. Just remember that losses are not necessarily going to be uniform across the width of the discharge. The width of your pan depends on how you prefer to measure. For example, a smaller pan on a stick can be used to take measurements from precise locations. To get a feel for total losses with this method, multiple measurements across the discharge span would be necessary. A pan equal to the width of the discharge does not allow for precise interpretation of where the losses are occurring, but can reduce sampling error. I've heard of people throwing 8 to 10 bushels out after they did some checks and that would, that's completely unacceptable, so. Uh, like today we proved, proved that I think we uh, optimized a combine here, saved ourselves, you know, one to two bushels of losses in a few minutes where probably we wouldn't have noticed that if we weren't doing the procedure, right? How do you producers figure out bushels per acre from the sample you collect? There are several methods producers can use to determine what loss they are incurring based on the seed sample collected. For most accurate results, they can use a weight measurement or a volume measurement. For quick visual measurements, you can calculate the area of seed that is lying flat in a pan. The equation for measuring losses is quite involved, so we recommend downloading a smartphone application or using the guide available from PAMI and the Canola Council of Canada. If you use the guide, you first need to find your concentration factor, which is the width of your header divided by the width of discharge. The graphs provided for weight or volume can be used. These graphs are based on a one square foot collection area. For larger pans, 
Just divide the volume or weight collected by the square footage of your pan. Let's say you collected 12.5 grams of canola in a 4 square foot pan. Divide 12.5 over 4. 3.1 is the number we are looking for under our concentration factor of 6. Slide over to the yellow column and you can see in this scenario the loss out the back of the combine is 50 pounds per acre or one bushel. Alternatively, you can use one of the web-based tools or smartphone applications available and let it do the work for you by plugging in the required information and the amount of canola collected either by weight or volume. Yeah, so one of the things that we have that makes it a real big issue when you're combining throughout the day your environmental conditions will change. And I think some of the most significant losses you can have is in the morning when it's tough you tend to want to run your rotor a little bit faster, or you want your fan a little bit faster and then throughout the, the day you can adjust those things because I think you can really have a lot of losses if you think that you can set your combine at the beginning of the day and go for a couple of days without changing. You're not going to save every berry and I think that a bushel an acre is an acceptable loss. It's a fine balance of trying to trying to get the work done, get harvest completed, but also uh, not to lose a whole lot of money coming out the back end. So, well, When canola is worth 11 or $12 a bushel, a little bit adds up to a lot. Invest a little time in checking your combine losses and reap a substantial return. For more information, visit the Canola Council online at www.canolacouncil.org.